This video is for entertainment and educational purposes only. Hey guys, Paul here. I'm going to follow up on this Jay Cutler cycle thing. I, I had some very spicy responses from, from the audience and uh, I felt like this was deserving of some additional discussion. Um, I, I'm going to have a few more clips from the interview that he did with Greg Doucette and give you my thoughts on some things. I, I, I've watched this thing now, I think like three or four different times, soaked in some of the comments that the, uh, that the YouTube subscribers gave, and, and I, I'm going to give you some additional thoughts on this. Before we do so, please take the time to subscribe to my channel. It's the best way you can show your appreciation for all the awesome content I'm putting out. Uh, if you have a question or comment, you can put them in the comment section below, or you think I'm wrong. Um, please tell me below. Uh, if you want to get in contact with me about coaching or have a 30 minute consultation call, you can do so by emailing me at bigp3rd at gmail.com, or you can reach out to me on Instagram at Paul K Barnett. I also keep that, uh, Instagram, uh, uh, page up to date with what's going on on my YouTube channel and my personal bodybuilding journey. Um, and if you enjoy this video, hit that thumbs up. Um, mixed with testosterone. I used DECA. I wasn't a fan of DECA. Um, but I, as I prep for the shows and Greg, my biggest challenge all year was getting the exotics, what I call the exotics, which is, okay, you have to use these for a show, but coming now and realizing a lot more than I realized back then. I don't know if I really needed to buy the Winstrels and the Anavars and the, I was using Parabone, which I don't even know if you know what that is. Yeah. Uh, I, I didn't really, there wasn't a lot of years that Trembolone was apparent for me. I mean, that's been the new thing trend, I guess that everyone uses. Um, uh, and then of course, you know, later on, I got into like the insulin stuff and, and that kind of, additive but i did that way later but my cycle would basically be off season i would use test and echo poise okay so he talked about exotics i guess things like winstrol um masteron etc uh a lot of people don't realize this 15 20 years ago this shit was hard to find it, pretty much the only thing we could find at that time with re regular any sort of regularity was just test anadrol d ball deca um pretty much even trend you couldn't you couldn't get trend you had to make your own um so that that that's that's you know him talking about having a hard time finding exotics that's that's very true so a lot of times guys would just end up using whatever they had it's not like now where you can get pretty much anything you want whenever you want. Uh, so that I that's something I wanted to clear up with people. It, they, 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 this, guys have this warped idea that they were taking all this crazy stuff. It was really hard to find shit back then. Um, and even evidently for Mr. Olympia, Jay Cutler, it was hard to find shit back then. And the equipoise and testosterone that he said he took in the off season, that's pretty standard. That, that, that was what most dudes ran back in the day. And I keep pounding this in, in, home again and again and again, and people don't seem to want to let this sink in, but it was very uncommon for people to be taking more than a gram of gear back then. It, it, I'm not saying it didn't happen. There, there certainly were people that were outliers and took shit tons of gear, but, uh, uh, you know, I, from the guys I've talked to, the, the pros, the majority of the pros back then were, were using somewhere between one and a half to two grams of gear in the off season. And then they would ramp up uh, for contest prep, maybe, you know, pushing up to two, two and a half grams. And that's what they used. Uh, like I said, there were some outliers. I, I know Nasser was uh, famous for, I, I, for what, from what I've heard, that he would push up to like five grams, but he's also dead. <laughs> so there is that. Truth is, is like, you know, my max, my max, I mean, of course, the, the GH would be added in, you know, when I would train for a contest. Um, and listen, the dosage, I mean, remember the first dosage was four I use a day. I may have gone up to nine, 12, uh, on and off. I mean, I think nine was probably the best sitting area for me. Like that seemed to be just like around the testosterone, you know, this, I've done a thousand a week of tests, but 500 was my, was my sweet spot, if that makes sense. Um, and, uh, 
you know, I, I toyed with insulin. I mean, I toyed with insulin from probably 2001 to, I absolutely stopped in 2004. I never used it again after that. In fact, I, I started working with Hani Rambo. So this one with, with the GH, I want to talk about that. I, I had some guys arguing with me that, that he had to have been using 20 units of GH. Um, and GH back then was crazy expensive. I recall pharmaceutical grade GH around 2005, which was at the prime of Jay's career, being somewhere around five hundred dollars for for 20, 20 units of of pharmaceutical grade GH. So if you do the math on that, if he was taking twenty units a day, times three hundred and sixty five days a year, that's like a hundred and seventy grand a year in GH. There is no fucking way that he was taking 170 grand a, a year in GH. You are out of your goddamn mind if you think he was spending that much. And then, you know, I know people will argue that these guys were prostituting themselves and they had sponsors and yada, yada, yada. What what sponsor was giving these guys GH? What spot, you know, what, what, what person would pay that for that much GH to have, have sex with a bodybuilder? Seriously, think about it. It, it makes no logical sense i know most of the dudes back then would just use gh during contest prep not to mention anybody who's ever used gh once you get north of eight units 10 units max somewhere in that range you start having severe issues with carpal tunnel and your insulin sensitivity goes to shit your blood sugar will run through the roof i'm not saying that there haven't been dudes that have haven't run 20 units of GH before there's all kinds of stupid idiots out there that do stupid shit, but those are outliers. Those aren't your average bodybuilder. So nine units of GH to me sounds very realistic. And from what I've heard about Jay, he's a very frugal guy. He's done very well with his money. He's invested his money. Um, and he has all sorts of businesses. I could you, could you imagine him dropping 150 to 180 grand a year on growth hormone? I can't. That doesn't seem realistic. In regards to the insulin thing, I don't think people truly understood how to use insulin back then. They, they just weren't leveraging it correctly. And so that's probably why they had poor results and guys didn't use it because they just weren't. Um, they didn't understand how it worked and they didn't use it properly. Yeah. And listen, kind of recap, like, listen, I would consider this, a, I would say, Hey, I loaded up for the shows, right. I just mentioned all this stuff like the G which I didn't mess with the GH in the off season, whatever. But, um, you know, I, I would load up and I mentioned like the off season stuff when I would do that. I was saying like, this would be my, like when I was 22, 23, whatever, before I got into heavy competition, you know, once I got into competing twice a year, I didn't really didn't have an off off season cycle. You know, this is when I had like the break, like even in, Oh, I turned pro in 96, I took 97 off. So I, I was saying on and off cycles, like that was more of those years. And then, you know, like I said, my off season would be leading up to, you know, my preparation 20 weeks down to 16, down to 12. Like I consider that kind of like my off season because, you know, I was just training, like I said, drug, like I didn't take any drugs, even though that shit stayed in my body. I mean, I only came off for 12 weeks. Shit, the stuff was still in my body, honestly. Okay, so I, had, I went back through and listened to this section a couple times. Um, and I have, I think I have a better understanding of how things worked. When he was talking about that 500 milligrams of test and 600 EQ, that was early on in his career. He talked about 96, uh, you know, in early in the 90s. And, and this was probably before he was a pro or, or just turning pro. I don't recall exactly when he turned pro. Late 90s, I think. Uh, so th th that was beforehand. And he talks about when he was on, when he was a pro, he was competing twice a year and he would do 20 week blast for his, for his, uh, prep for, for a show. So if he was on 40 weeks out of the year, he was only off 12 weeks out of the year. It was a six week break between each 20 week blast, which to be honest with you is just stupid anyway, because he's taking equipoise. Uh, you're, you know, it, it, what a 22 day half life or whatever, whatever it is. And it takes five half lives for it to eliminate from your system. So, I mean, it's in your system for three or four months. Uh, so he's still on, even though he says he's off, he's just, <laughs> just you know, the stuff's coming down a little bit. So it, he was essentially on year round. 
And from what I gather here, from what I from what I am deducing, he he talks about how he would start his cycle lower um, with the you know maybe the 500 test, 600 EQ, and then he would add things on as he goes. So pyramid up. So maybe he finished up his cycle at two and a half to three grams, which would sound more reasonable to me. Started off the 20 weeks at a little over a gram, and then finished off at two to three grams. That's my take on that after thinking about it and re-listening to this section again. It was pretty much the basics where, I'll be honest, all the things I just said, minus the parabone, because it's almost impossible to get, like this is what Joe Blow in the gym tells me he's taking right now. So he brings up the point about guys taking, (laughs) gym pros taking what, um, he was taken when he was Mr. Olympia, and that is a fantastic point. I, I I have had a lot of people reach out to me since I've started this channel, and I talked to quite a few people. And I am absolutely blown away at the amount of 165-pound <laughs> dudes that are taking grams of gear. It just blows me away. I mean, way more. I, 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 it's, it, is, it is crazy. The guys that have reached out to me that are the biggest are the ones that are taking the least amount of stuff. I, I'm not shitting you. I am not shitting you, and I, and I'm sure he's scratching his head when he hears this shit. <laughs> I'm sh- I'm sure it makes makes him nuts, even if he was taking a couple grams. But um, uh, it um, it I am forever blown away. I think some people think that somehow taking shit tons of stuff is going to equal them being Jay Cutler when it, when when that's not the case. It's it's not going to happen. Uh, it, you know, I, like I said, I, I'm blown away by it and I, I can't imagine what he and, and other dudes like him think about it. it. It's always the skinniest guys that are taking the most gear without fail. At least that's been what I've seen. All right, guys, I'm going to show you something. I think that's going to help put this in perspective for you. Um, and why it doesn't matter what you take. You're not going to look like Jay Cutler. Uh, unless you have elite genetics, which very few people do. Uh, it's like being seven feet tall. You're, you're a one in, um, so many thousand people. It's just, it's just extremely rare. These pictures here, the one on the left, this is Jay Cutler after one year of lifting weights at 18 years old. I don't care what, if anything he took, he claims to have been natural in this picture, but I don't care what you took. You're not going to look like that. You just aren't. The picture on the right is him at 16. He was 220 pounds when he was 16 years old. That was him before he took anything. He wasn't even lifting weights and he was just doing shit around his farm, evidently. He, he, and and that's just, that's that was his starting point. Think about where your starting point was and where Jay Cutler's starting point was. Um, and that that is how much of a role the genetics play into this. And this is why... I tend to believe him when he talks about the doses that he took. Uh, this was his baseline. Uh, you, know, you know, imagine you, know, you adding 30 to 40 pounds of muscle. Imagine adding 30 to 40 pounds of muscle to his baseline and what he would look like. Completely different. Completely different things. So, uh, you know, I don't know if he's being 100% transparent with everything. Probably not. You know, he has a lot to protect and, and probably responsibility not, not, not to get other people hurt. But um, in, in reality, uh, you know, I, I, I tend to think that what he was saying is somewhat accurate. Um, he was vague about certain things. And after re-listening to things, uh, I have a different interpretation of some of it. But... Think about this. Look at these pictures. Let these pictures soak in when you think about his potential versus yours and whether or not uh, him taking what he took actually worked. Anyway, guys, hopefully this is helpful. Take care.